Hello friends and welcome back to part 11 of our fast API tutorial. Um, this part and the next couple of parts are going to be a little bit shorter. Um, just because it's, there's not a lot of information, but I want to keep it, you know, like the offspring, I want to keep it separated. Okay. I think it's the offspring. I might be dating myself there, but whatever, that's fine. Okay. So let's get right into it. Now, uh, you can see here, we've got part 11 is, is highlighted. Everything else is, uh, is commented out. Our app is up and running and we are good to go. Now, before we get into actual, any actual code, um, I'm just going to remind you that this, this fast API sort of stuff should work with, um, any of these, not any, but it should work with most of these field types that you see. Um, we've primarily only been working with, um, primitive types like integers, floats, strings, booleans, things like that. But you should be able to, I think we did one that was a, uh, a URL, I think, but you can see we've got, there's date time, there's, um, you can do unions of things, you can do sets. Um, you know, the, the world is your oyster, if you will. Um, we can look at, enums and choices. We kind of already did this a little bit using base model, um, pydantic types, file path, color, like all of these things are available. So I encourage you to go ahead and play with it. Um, one thing that I am going to uh, point out is this UUID. Uh, it stands for a universally unique identifier. Um, and let's, let's actually take this, the UUID and let's take some date types and let's just build a route and let's see what we can do with it. Okay. So let's set up app dot put items, item ID, and we will call this read items. Now what we're going to put in here, item ID, instead of it being a string or an integer, we're now going to call it a UUID type. And in order to do this, we need to import from UUID, import UUID. And we will see what that looks like. If you've not seen that before, don't worry, we'll see it in a few minutes. Let's add in a couple other things here. Let's add in a start date, which will be a date time or none which will be a none. And let's just, so we're going to have to import this as well. From date time, import date time. And I just want to show you this right here. So let's return item ID is item ID and start date is start date. Now, something is not going to work here. And I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to try and figure out what's going to be weird in this situation. So what type of parameter is this going to be? That's kind of what I mean, but it's not going to work. Like we, we want this to be a body parameter and I'm giving you a hint that it's not going to work. And the reason for that is because we've not actually, this is, as far as we're concerned, just a regular type. It's a built-in type. We've not set up a, a, a model using base model. We've not done any of that. So we're going to come in here and this is going to be a query parameter. This date time object is going to be a query. And sometimes you want that. Um, I'm building an app right now that takes in a date as a, as a parameter. Um, because that's what we're filtering on. I don't want to expose IDs, so I'm exposing a date. Um, so we can do that. But here we want it to be a body object. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say body of none. Because we don't care about any other information. This is just a, a small example. Now what we're going to be doing is we would be passing in an actual date time object. Let's add in a couple more things. And date is going to be date time or none, which will again be a body object. Let's save and refresh. And now it should be a dictionary. There we go. Let's add a couple more items here. 
um, repeat at will be a time object. And th we're, this isn't going to do anything. We're just going to actually return what we're passing in. But I just kind of want to show you some of the other um, options for what you can what you can pass in here. And let's do a process after, and let's make this a time delta or none. There. And what we will do is we will call something else start process equals start date plus process after, and then duration equals end date minus start process. So, you know, I don't know what this would be for. You know, you've, you've got something that you want to, um, you know, you, you want to have it repeat after a certain amount of time. I, I, I don't exactly know why you would do this, but this is just a very simple, a uh, very simple example that uses time, time delta and date time, which we, the latter two of which we need to import. So there, we now have time, time delta, date time. Now, let us set, actually, let's just return stuff now. I don't want to do any more of this. End date is end date. Um, repeat at is going to be repeat at. Process after will be process after. There's got to be a better way to do this, but I don't even care right now. Uh, start process is start process and duration is duration. Save, let's refresh. Now, we can't use our trusty little one, two, three that we've used before. It's not going to work because this is not an integer. We can't say hello because we need to actually pass in a UUID type. For those of you who are unfamiliar with it, let's just open up our terminal right here. You can see I've got one right here, but let's quit and just kind of, let's do it just from scratch. Open up a Python instance and we need to import UUID or you can do from UUID import UUID4. And then all we need to do is UUID4 and execute. Now we copy this entire stuff in between the single quotes. We hit that. And now we're going to get an unprocessable uh, entity. I always want to say identity entity, but don't worry about that. What we can see here is this worked. This UUID worked. The unprocessable entity has to do with this repeat at value. It can't actually convert the word string to a time. You can put in a number and it should work. You can see this is now going to repeat at two seconds, midnight plus two seconds. You can do um, 1630. Let's see if that works. There we go, 1630, which is 430 p.m. for those of us in the U.S. and 26 seconds. Okay. Process after can be, um, let's say 3600. I mean, it's just it's just a number. So, so there we go, and we can see that uh, that the start date plus process after gives us a start process. Duration is end date minus start process. We get these values here. So that that's kind of it for this video. It's not going to, like I said, it's not very long. Um, it's just you know to show you, you can use more than just your standard primitive types. Um, again, if you this is where I would encourage you, uh, we, we talked about uh, including regex in some of this before for uh, validation purposes. I would encourage you to, to look at the Pydantic docs to see if there's a field type that already conforms to what you need to do. Because, you know, trying to, trying to implement regex like we saw when I was trying to do it, I just, I, I failed miserably. Okay. Uh, in the next video, which is also going to be short, we are going to cover um, cookie parameters and header parameters. I'm going to kind of squeeze those two into one video because otherwise uh, the video on cookie parameters would be all of, I don't know, 30 seconds. It's really not going to be very long. Uh, okay, I will see you in that next video.